Well, it's been a rough and tumultuous week in the southern African nation of Zimbabwe with protests, violence and chaos at border posts. This was sparked by an attempted ban on imports from neighboring South Africa. This has led to the closure of the border for the first time since it was set up in 1929. CNBC Africa traveled along the famous trade route between Zimbabwe and South Africa to find out just exactly what the feeling is on the ground. Let's take a look. The sun rises over one of the most famous trade routes in Africa. For nearly a century, traders have traveled between Harare and Johannesburg. On this day, after many days of chaos, this trade was stopped in its tracks. Uh, we just you wait until we see what will happen. Because ourselves, if we act, we will be beaten up. We will be beaten or shot down. You see? As these politicians, we don't know exactly what they are trying to say, but them, they are the ones who can decide the situation on the ground. With the majority, we, 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 we might differ with the opinion with the government. You see? What, what do you want as a majority? As the majority, we want to cross with the food. Since the food is scarce, is scarce in Zimbabwe, we want to cross with the food. But them, they've got a different idea. You see? People are very angry and uh, now they are trying to take a stand actions against the government. The town of Messina relies heavily on this trade between two of Africa's biggest trading partners. Trade that's worth nearly $4 billion a year. It has made Musina grow. This extension to the mall is just one of the fruits of this trade. It has thrown up entrepreneurs like Rocky Jadeja. In 20 years, he has built up this cash and carry with the help of trades from Zimbabwe. The implosion of the economy of Zimbabwe has sent hundreds of thousands heading south in search of food and basic commodities. His grandfather moved from India to Messina 80 years ago. This ban on imports into Zimbabwe is one of the biggest threats to the family business in nearly a century. If ban continues, um, I would say maybe within a month or two, if it carries on, you will see 80% of town will be empty because people must evacuate and again look for another place to do business because you cannot pay a rent, the ex expenses what you have overheads every month. And you got to you got to look for another option because Messina as a business, it relies completely on Zimbabweans. We have a local trade, but that's end of the month when they get salary. But uh, normally 99% I can say that goes to Zimbabwe because they come, cross, buy, go back, sell, come back. That gives us the business. Most of the food in this warehouse end up on tables in Zimbabwe. On this week, most of it stayed put. This had been a tough week for the entire town. It was virtually shut down by the import ban at the border post. Some of them, they're staying close to the border. They have tried to come back today. Uh, they showed it that they aren't in need of some goods. So they just like it's a trial base. They came back and see how they're going to cross today and see how the effect is at the border. And then they will decide what to do afterwards. Maybe after Monday, if the things come normal, that's what they're thinking after crossing today. And if the goods go smoothly as they're thinking, might it will reopen from Monday. Let's hope we're looking forward for a positive result. The only thing that is keeping Jadeja going is hope that his traveling customers will always get through. One of them is James Tobagala from the town of Batebridge on the Zimbabwe side of the border. He may be here, but the only problem is he's not buying as much as he usually does. He fears it will be seized by officials at the border. In fact, I could understand uh, there's a situation whereby they are trying to protect local industries because they're getting much affected by these imports. But it's a two-way two situation. You see, it's like robbing Peter in order to pay John. You see, that's where the thing is. Then there is the currency issue. This issue is affecting mostly people along the border because we buy the currency in Zim, it's US dollars. So if you store commodities in US dollars, the community that we are serving, they are paying in rents. So you hardly can run, run that business. But in land like Harare, Bulwayo, they make, they survive out of this. It's profitable for them. Even though they are charged triple the, the duty, still they can survive, you see. Like Tobagala, there are many more who fear their goods will be taken at the border. They plan to make their own way across illegally. It is a secret world where identities are guarded. I want to buy bananas and tomatoes. They never say it's Zimbabwe, they're bad 
But you heard that they've banned food from South Africa into Zimbabwe. How are you going to do that? How are you going to buy the bananas? Do you take, are you allowed to take them through? Uh, not exactly, but you just uh, do something like wise, then you can buy and sell them. Yeah, we are buying. We go through. We are not going through the border. Yeah. yeah, we're going through that river. The question is, what are the authorities doing about it? We in South Africa's Limpopo province, and the people in charge here do not want to talk to us. We contacted both the police and the Bait Ridge officials, and neither were willing to comment. But it's among the Zimbabweans, and there are many here in Musina, that you find the greatest reluctance to talk openly. That speaks volumes on the kind of fear and uncertainty that lies on the other side of the border. Aviwem Dila for CNBC Africa, Musina.